Hi, Paul here from Trekit as usual with Harry and we're upstairs in the Trekit service centre today to talk to you about the RAB solar sleeping bags. Now this video is a bit of an overview of the range uh, because all of the bags share the same kind of fabrics and insulation characteristics. The big differences obviously are in the weight and the temperature ratings but Harry as usual, we'll put a link up to our website so you can uh, get all the specs, all the temperature ratings, all the weights, all the pack sizes are all there on the website. I'm just going to focus on the bags, construction and filling, etc. So what are they? Well, they're, they're a lightweight, compressible, synthetic filled bag. RAB use their own Stratos synthetic insulation in the bag. And the big advantage of uh, synthetic insulation over down predominantly is it retains its warmth even when wet. It resists compression really, really well, and it is by far much easier to care for, to wash and to dry than a, synthet than a down material. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have this quite the same warmth to weight ratio of down, so synthetic bags are generally a little bit heavier. But having said that, these are a good sensible weight, and they've got good pack size for just about any UK, Europe, worldwide, outdoor environment that you can think of. So the range that we keep here at Trekit, we keep the Solar 2, the Solar 2 XL for taller users, Solar 3, the Solar 3 XL, and also we do a women's specific Solar 3. So a good range of bags to cover pretty much everything from uh, two plus three season through to four season bags, keep you nice and warm throughout the year. Okay, so before I start prattling on about all the techie stuff, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you hit the little bell icon, you'll get notifications as soon as we post any new videos. So what are these bags made from? Well, like I said right at the start, they use RAB's Stratus Synthetic Insulation. Uh, it compresses well, so it'll pack down nice and small. It uh, resists compression, so even though you can pack it down, it does spring back up. Once you get it out of the bag, it lofts up really nicely. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, loft basically means the amount of space that insulation can fill up. So what you want the insulation to do is spring back to life to fill up the space in the bag so you've got that maximum air trapping capability to keep you warm. That's basically what keeps you warm. You don't want the filling to be all flat and squashed. So it compresses well, but then lofts back up once you take it outside of the bag. The outer fabric on the uh, whole complete range of solar bags is uh, a lightweight ripstop 20D nylon. Uh, it's lightweight, so it, it compresses down nice and small, helps to keep the pack size down, helps to keep the weight down, but it is tough. You know, nylon is a tough fabric. It resists abrasion really well, and that little ripstop there just means that if you do snag the bag on something sharp, you catch it, you're not going to get a great big tear, you're just going to a little nick, which is easy to repair. The outside as well is also treated with a DWR, a durable water repellent, which means that if you, I know you, you tip your water bottle over it or you get caught out in the rain, get out the bag, or you're just bivvying out somewhere and you get a little bit of dew on the bag, it will bead up and roll off before that moisture can really penetrate deep inside the bag and compromise some of that thermal efficiency. And then inside the bag, you've got a, a slightly softer, lighter, well, it's the same, it's a 20D nylon again, but it's, it's a plain weave. So it feels softer, it feels lighter, and it's really comfortable next to the skin and helps to wick the moisture away from your body so you don't get that kind of slimy, clammy feeling in the inside of the bag if you're just wearing some lightweight clothing inside. So nice lightweight construction helps to keep the pack size and the weight to a minimum. The solar bags are constructed using two different types of, uh, well, what do you call it? They, they've placed the filling in two different ways. Uh, so on the bottom of the bag, where the filling gets the most compression from your body weight, and also where most of the cold penetrates the bag, generally speaking, you'll feel cold in a sleeping bag because of the ground temperature rather than the air temperature. So if you're not using a, a good insulating mat and you're lying straight on the ground, you'll freeze, basically, in pretty much any bag. So what RAB have done, they've used a blanket construction on the bottom of the bag. So on the bottom of the bag here, you've got one piece of insulation in the form of a blanket or, or a sheet of it all the way through. So that resists compression better and is much more stable when you're wriggling around to make sure that insulation remains underneath you. 
And then on the top of the bag, you've got a shingle construction or tiled construction, as we say here in the UK. But basically that means you've got individual kind of sheets of uh, insulation wadding running across the bag that overlap like tiles on a roof. And that means you get maximum amount of insulation, but you also get more flexibility and you get the ability to compress that better because it's not all joined together. So there's a bit of movement in the filling uh, and they overlap to reduce cold spots. So there's no cold spots on the filling. Very little stitching on the outside of the bag, which also increases cold spots. So you've got that shingle construction to help with compressibility, to maximise the thermal efficiency, and also to keep the weight down. There's just slightly less filling up on the top there, but works because of that shingle construction. RAB, rather cleverly as well, construct their bags using a, well, they call it proportionally designed differential cut. And basically, in layman's terms, that means that for every fill weight of bag, so we've got a Solar 2 here and we've got a Solar 3, the Solar 3 will have more filling in it. Solar 4, for instance, will have more filling again. Solar 1 will have less filling. What RAB do is they make sure that the space between the lining of the bag and the outer of the bag is proportional to the amount of filling inside that specific bag. So that means that the down or the synthetic filling can loft to its maximum. You wouldn't expect the same distance in a Solar 2 between the inner and the outer to be the same as a Solar 3 because a Solar 3 has got more filling. You'd expect the di difference to be greater. But you'd be amazed how many manufacturers use the same lining and the same shell for all of their range irrespective of the amount of fill. And what that does is it means that the, the more fill that you put in, the more it gets compressed, the less it can loft, the less effective it is. So RAB have rather cleverly developed this proportionally designed differential cut. Works really, really well. So let's start off with the features of the bag and we'll start right up at the top and you can see here you've got a really nice fully insulated 3D shaped hood on the sleeping bag which is shaped really nicely to get your head right up inside. It's quite a simple thing to increase the warmth of any sleeping bag by sticking your head up inside here and making sure that you're fully covered. Obviously you lose a lot of heat out through the top of your head and if you're feeling cold in your sleeping bag get the hood up, get it done up nice and tight. You've got a draw cord here, you can pull this in get this closure really tight, snuggled in, lovely and warm. Inside the bag, so drop down from the hood, you've got this internal uh, shoulder baffle. Uh, and again, that uh, helps to really trap the warmth inside the bag. If you think about when you're in bed and it's cold, you pull the duvet, wrap it around your shoulders, that's exactly what that does. So it's a fully insulated, extra kind of sausage-shaped baffle which runs around the top of your shoulders. It's got its own draw cord on the inside. So again, you can tighten that right up and that will form a really tight closure around your neck, get the hood up over the top, you're going to be really toasty. The Solar Bag uses a three quarter length zip so it doesn't go all the way down to the toe, it's a double ended zip and that opens right out so if you're getting a bit warm in the bag you can just open it up, let some fresh air in, let some of the warmth out and behind the zip you can see here you've got another one of these insulated baffles and that just helps to protect you the, uh, from cold drafts which may penetrate through the zip. Uh, the zip runs nice and easy um, and on the end of the zip puller you've got a glow-in-the-dark tab, really handy for when you're busting for a wee in the middle of the night and you've got to fumble away and find your zip, there it is glowing away so you can get out quickly. And right up at the top you've got a little velcro tab uh, which just helps to secure the zip, stop it spreading open if you ha happen to be quite a wriggly sleeper. So you've got a little tab up at the top there just to keep the zip nice and secure when it's done up. The other big advantage of having the two-way zip means uh, if you're getting a bit warm and you don't want to open the bag right out, you can undo it a bit from the bottom and you can undo it a bit from the top and that kind of keeps the bag wrapped around you but just gives you stacks of ventilation. So right up at the top of the bag, just underneath the, the neckline there, got a little zip pocket, it's quite hard to spot because the zip is the same colour as the fabric but it's definitely there because I've got my hand in it. Uh, really handy little place to keep electronics like your phone, bits and pieces, GPS maybe, especially if it's cold, you don't want to deplete the batteries, keep it in here, it'll keep that device nice and warm and obviously it'll uh, also a good place to stash your alarm clock or the alarm on your phone so it's right next to you, make sure you get up and get on with it. And as you can see here, you've got a really nicely shaped angled toe box, which means that when you're lying down in the bag and you've got your feet up like that, 
they will not be too restricted inside the sleeping bag. It's just a nice little feature, helps to keep you comfortable if you're lying on your back. And then right down at the bottom of the sleeping bag on the bottom seam, you've got these two webbing loops and they're there to hang the bag up. Really good idea to keep this stored loose, hang it up in a wardrobe, hang it up in the attic, whatever. Just store it nice and loose, helps to air it, helps to dry it, helps to keep that filling nicely lofted and ready for your next adventure. Rab rather helpfully on the inside of the zip baffle here, give you all the information about the bags uh, in the solar range. And in fact, all their bags carry this. You can see the temperature rating. You've got the rating of the bag here. You've got some fabric information, some care information. So everything you need to know about the bag is here. This information is all on our website and there will be links to follow through so you can really kind of, uh, you know, get all the information you need. All the solar bags come with a, a little compression stuff sack like this. You can see you've got compression straps on here so you can squash the bag down to about half its normal size. You really shouldn't store the bag for long periods of time inside this stuff sack. If you keep the bag compressed for long periods of time, you lose its ability to loft effectively. So like I said earlier, use the hang tabs to hang it up somewhere or just store it loose in maybe like an old duvet cover or something like that just to protect it. I keep mine up in the attic in old duvet covers and it works really well. And then when I want to use it and get it to my rucksack, I use the stuff sack because that's what it's for, so stuffing it into. And this is what I put it in my rucksack with. Rab have given the, the solar range of bags uh, a kind of a, a regular fit. It's still got that tapered mummy design to maximize the efficiency of the filling. You want as much filling around you as possible. But it's not a super skinny alpine fit and it's not a kind of massively roomy fit either. It's, I, I would call it comfortably roomy. Uh, and obviously if you're a taller user like me, you'd want to go for one of the XL options. So the regular sizes, so the Solar 2 for instance, is suitable for a user up to 185 centimetres. And the 2XL is suitable for users up to 200 centimetres. Okay, thanks very much for watching. This has been the RAB Solar Range of Sleeping Bags. As usual, if you have any comments or questions, pop them into the section below. It's always good to hear from you. Uh, Harry will pop some links up, so if you want to go and have a look at more information, have a look at the complete range, perhaps even make a purchase, that'll take you through to our website. Okay, thanks again. See you again soon, guys. Toodaloo.